Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 11th August 2018. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you want to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it may help in your trading, you can visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. When we are swing trading stocks, we like to take the trades in the direction of the market. We will analyze the market's direction using market breadth of NASDAQ and NYSE and also technical charts of the four broad market ETFs. In addition to aligning the trades with the market, we like to align them with industry strength. We will study industry strength using industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may look at some of the recent trade ideas shared in QTraders forum and try to look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with US oil. We are looking at the US oil ETF using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this at a glance template because it can help us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge only in few seconds. In the weekly chart oil displayed a bearish headwind several weeks ago. Since then, the weekly backdrop candle color is remaining magenta. In the daily chart, in the last market roundup, I discussed that USO was inside a triangle pattern bound by resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom. It is continuing inside the triangle pattern we will wait for it to come out of the triangle to be sure about the trend and then try to take our next swing trade. Gold ETF GLD In the weekly chart, price is just below the watermark support level. In the last market roundup, I discussed that if price bounces up from this watermark support, it may give us a low risk long entry opportunity. Price is still below that watermark support, therefore we didn't have the long opportunity yet. You may keep an eye for a potential long in GLD in the coming week. From commodities analysis, we move on to market breadth analysis. Every week we study market breadth using NASDAQ Composite Index and NYSE Composite Index, both using weekly charts and three pairs of internals, new high-low, advanced decline and up-down volume. As this study is using broad indices and longer term weekly charts, it is to be used more for longer term investment decisions, not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. 
Nasdaq ended the week positive, however, with a bearish shape candle. The color is yellow, neutral. The divergence between Nasdaq index and new high low is continuing. New high low declined this week and closed below zero. And Nasdaq advanced decline and up down volume also went down and closed below zero. This is showing that though the price closed little bit higher, more stocks went down than up and they went down with higher volume. Also more stocks made new low than new high. The internals in NASDAQ were bearish one week ago and they are continuing to be bearish this week as well. NYSE outperformed NASDAQ one week ago. However, this week it again underperformed NASDAQ. It closed significantly below last week's close with a bearish shape candle. NYSE internals were bullish last week. However, this week all the three internals declined and closed below zero. If we combine the index charts with the internals, we can conclude that over longer term, the indices are in uptrend. They will remain in uptrend until these memory support lines are broken. For this specific week, the candle shapes are bearish for both the indices and the internals are bearish as well. NASDAQ is near all-time high. NYSE is somewhat away from all-time high. The internals are weak. This is probably a time to be careful and not to take too many long trades. Let's see if we arrive at the same conclusion from the market ETF study. SPY S&P 500 ETF Last week the candle shape and color both were bullish in the weekly chart. This week SPY tried to go up but reversed and ended with a bearish shape candle. In the daily chart last week price was very close to the upper boundary lines. This week it tried to go up on Thursday, it displayed a bearish headwind signal and magically it dropped significantly on Friday. Friday's low came very close to the memory support line and SPY bounced from there. SPY is in uptrend, however, it is also inside a kind of triangle pattern bound by watermark resistance lines and memory support line. Until it comes out of this triangle pattern, the direction is not clear and we may stay away from taking any swing trend. SPY closed down for the week and QQQ, we are looking at QQQ now closed up for the week, however, ended with a bearish shape candle. Two weeks ago, QQQ tried to go to the same price level and reverse from there. That time also it had a bearish shape candle with upper tail. And now again we have one weekly candle with long upper tail reversing from the same price level. This is not a bullish signal. In the daily chart, price was going up last week. This week it tried to go up, came near the watermark resistance and slightly pulled back from there. QQQ is also inside a kind of triangle pattern bound by resistance watermark and support memory. 
we may wait for it to break out of the triangle before trying our next swing trade. Dow Jones Industrial ETF DIA. This closed down for the week, just like SPY. The weekly candle shape is bearish, though the color is still bullish. Relative performance line is showing that DIA is underperforming the market. In the daily chart, DIA tried to go up, came to the watermark resistance level that was created by bearish headwind signal earlier, displayed a bearish headwind signal on Wednesday, Thursday, dropped somewhat and on Friday dropped significantly. Just like in case of SPY, the bearish headwind could be used to take very profitable short trades. And just like SPY on Friday came very close to the memory support and went up from there, DIA also came very close to the memory support line and went up from there. Similar to QQQ and SPY, DIA is also inside triangle pattern bound by resistance watermark and support memory. The trend is not clear and we may stay away from taking directional swing trades. Russell 2000 ETF IWM IWM went up for the week, ended the week with a mixed shape candle. Hollow body but long upper tail. Candle color remained bearish magenta. In the last market roundup, the weekly color was magenta. I had discussed that if daily came down and gave us a magenta color candle, that would give us a trend following go with flow short trade setup. This week the Candle color in weekly chart is remaining magenta. We didn't have a magenta candle in the daily chart yet. If that magenta candle comes next week, it will signal the trend following short setup we were waiting for. Looking closely in the daily chart, we can see now that three candles in this week had long upper tails. They all tried to go to the same price level and came down from there, showing that sellers are coming in at that price level. That is a bearish sign that selling pressure may lead to the trend following short trade next week. Out of the four broad market ETFs, two of them closed higher and two of them closed down. However, all of them ended the week with a bearish shape candle either in the weekly or in the daily. Several of them, all of them actually, except IWM are inside a triangle pattern, but IWM is not inside a triangle pattern. So if the market goes down, IWM will be the one to give us the low risk short trade before others. Four week sector performance. We are looking at the 11 sectors across three review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week before the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks before the green bar. Together they give us four weeks or about one month of performance. This week three of the 11 sectors went up, eight went down, showing a bearish picture at the sector level. Sector likes telecom and consumer staples. Telecom and consumer staples. They were weak for long time. Started to recover in the middle but declined again. We can see that the red bar and the blue bar for both of them are 
negative. So these two sectors were weak, tried to go up and declined again. Whereas other sectors like information, technology, etc. are now being spotty on QH sector heat map. Information technology is up this week. However, it was down one week ago and prior to that, it was down as well. So we are seeing reversal of telecom consumer staples and we are also seeing spotty up down up move in the other sectors that were strong earlier. This is showing market indecision. One may be extra careful when taking directional trades, especially breakout trades. Materials is a sector that is now down for all the three review periods for a month. Others may be bearish now, however, this is the time when Q traders start to look for low risk buy opportunities. That is the superior profit way. Later on, at the end of regular session, we will try to find some low risk buy opportunity in the material sector. For the week, we had three sectors up information technology, consumer discretionary, and healthcare. However, on Friday, the market was clearly bearish. On Friday, the magenta colored bars show that all the sectors were down except energy. Energy went up, probably fueled by oil's up move, but all the other sectors came down on Friday. So the week ended on a bearish note, more bearish than it had been between Monday to Thursday. At the market level, we see indecision. At the sector level, it seems bearish. However, these levels are too broad. When we drill down to the industry level, we can always try to look for long and short opportunities where the industry, fundamental and technical forces are aligned. Before looking at the best performing industries, let us look at the sectors using QH, sector scorecard and heat map. The heat map shows that currently information technology and consumer discretionary are the strongest ones. Materials and consumer staples are weakest ones. Telecom and consumer staples, they were weak earlier, tried to turn into strength cyan color and then became weak again. Whereas sectors like information technology that was strong earlier, it is showing up down up move, cyan then magenta, cyan magenta and cyan again. We can see similar spotty color in consumer discretionary, in energy, in industrials etc. Materials is one sector that is weak consistently. It had been down for all the three review periods for the entire month and later on we will try to look for low risk buy opportunity in this sector. Let's now go back to industry analysis. We are looking at the 10 best performing industries we are looking at their 5 days and 10 days scores. We can see for several of them like specialized finance, distributors, alternative carriers, apparel retail, the scores are remaining at around the same level. Showing that they were strong one week ago as well. Looking at that you could probably take Showing long entries one week ago and book profit by now. Consumer discretionary is one of the strongest sectors and that is showing up in the industries as well. Five consumer discretionary industries are in this best performers list. They are distributors, laser facilities, department stores, apparel retail and specialty stores. 
some of these industries may be going up because the stocks are having earnings and they are going up after earnings. Earnings are usually associated with either gap up or gap down move. Though the industries are strong, if they are having gap up move or gap down move, they may not give us low risk entry opportunities right now. You may drill down into some of these industries to look for such low risk entry opportunity. Alternative carriers is one of the best performing industries. We discussed this stock many times earlier, CenturyLink, CTL. This went up by 13.5% that was after earnings. We didn't have any swing long opportunity, however, it gave a very clear and profitable gap long setup on Thursday. If we look back, I discussed CTL when it gave bullish headwind both in weekly and daily in December 2017, almost 8 months ago. You could take a buy position in the stock on 8th December using Q trend following long setup that is go with flow setup and by now that entry has given more than 45% profit. This is again another example where others may be taking notice of the stock now however using reversal setup we could have taken the long trade long time ago. Using either reversal setup or the first trend following long setup that came after bullish headwind appeared. Let's look at the best performing industries in QH, locate alternative carriers, drill down to CTL and see how you could take the gap long trade this week. In QH, industry scorecard and heat map. The best performing industries of the week are shown with cyan color over 5 days period. Alternative carriers is one industry that is strong for many review periods. Let's drill down. CTL, CenturyLink is a stock that is optimally valued. The valuation primary sale is coming in cyan color. It still pays a very nice dividend of 10.1%. This week it went up by 13.5%. Let's look at CenturyLink's technical charts. It went up strongly after earnings. On Thursday it had a gap up move and from there price went up rapidly. Let's look at the real time fine tune chart to see if we had a low risk gap long trade setup on Thursday. This is century link using fine tune 5 minute chart. On Thursday price opened at this price level the blue pivot line that was significantly above previous day's high the green pivot line. That was a gap up move. Soon after market opened, the early range high and low lines, the cyan pivot lines were drawn. At this point, price went above early range high, giving us a gap long trade setup. Entry would be at this price level. Stop would be just below early range low. Stop was never hit. As price came to the pause pivot lines, much more than risk distance was covered and one could book profit in the trade. Sometimes day traders may hold partial position overnight to make it a two day trade. If you did that then as Friday price went up further, the remaining position would have given even higher profit. If we look back, we can see that we had a bullish headwind in the daily chart on 28th November. And in the same week, we had a bullish headwind in the weekly chart as well. 
one could take a long trade at that time or could wait for the cyan color candle to come in the daily chart on 8th December and take the first trend following long trade setup. At that time, the dividend yield was even higher. The stock was of course optimally valued at that time. That long trade has given significant profit by now. The bullish headwind in this case also could capture the very bottom of the stock. From best performing industries, we move to the worst performing industries. We are looking at the 10 worst performing industries of this week, looking at their 5 days and 10 day scores. Some of the industries were weak from previous week itself, like houseware and specialties, reinsurance, etc. And some were stronger last week but dropped this week, like personal product. Specialized consumer services, healthcare distributors, brewers. In heavy electrical equipment, the industry was weak from the previous week itself. We have this stock TPIC. TPIC was overvalued, it fell sharply, it displayed a trend reversal. Headwind short signal on 27th July and possible trend following. Go with flow short signal on 6th August. Both of these turned out to be very profitable. Let's look at the worst performing industries in QA. Look at heavy electrical equipment, locate TPIC and identify the headwind setup on 27th July and the possible trend following short trade setup on 6th August. In QA, the worst performing industries of the week are displayed with magenta color over 5 days period. Heavy electrical equipment may be of special interest because it was strong earlier, cyan color and now turning magenta. So this industry might have given us turn around candidates, reversal candidates. Let's drill down. TPIC, overvalued stock, went down by 12% this week. Recent quarter earnings was also negative. Let's look at the technical charts, TPIC. In the weekly chart, we had a series of candles with upper tail. That would have alerted us and we could start looking for a short setup from that time. On this day in the daily chart, we had a bearish headwind signal. That time the weekly was already yellow that gave us a trend reversal headwind short setup on this day. We could take the short right at this point, put stop just above recent high. The stop was never hit. It fell down sharply after earnings giving us very large profit. After the bearish headwind signal, we had a magenta color candle on this day. We already had lower low by that time. We could take that magenta candle as a go with flow short trade setup. That trend following short setup also gave significant profit at the stock drop heavily after earnings. As earnings was nearby, one could take the bearish trade using probably short call vertical. Accelerating industries, we are looking at 10 of the most accelerating industries using their 5 days and 10 days scores. You can see that for all of these industries, 10 days scores were much smaller than this week's score. Human Resource and Employment Services accelerated. This stock MAN is optimally valued. Q headwind, the trend reversal setup could catch the exact low on 13th July. Sometime ago, that trade was very profitable. And now you may look for a Q trend following. That is go with flow long trade setup in the coming days. Let's look at the accelerating industries from QA. Look at human resource and employment services. 
and then drill down into MAN. See how you could benefit from the price move. In QA, the most accelerating industries are shown in cyan color over page 5 days column. Human Resource and Employment Services. It accelerated heavily. Page 5 days column is cyan. And 5 days score also became cyan. So it accelerated and the industry is outperforming others. Let's drill down. MAN, this stock is having very nice valuation. Valuation is in cyan color. It is also having recent quarter earnings growth in bright green color. Yearly EPS growth is steady. It was yellow earlier, then turned dark green. Pays a dividend of 2.25 percentage. This week, the stock went down a little bit. It came down after going up. If next week it goes up, it may give us a trend following go with flow long trade setup. Let's look at the stock using technical chart. MAN displayed a bullish headwind in the weekly chart that could effectively catch the very bottom. On this weekly candle, it tried to go below the watermark created by the bullish headwind candle, however failed and closed with a very bullish shape candle. In the daily chart also we had a bullish headwind signal. Again that could catch effectively the very bottom. After earnings it went up. Now it has pulled back little bit. The weekly candle color is remaining cyan. Therefore, in the daily chart, if it goes up next week, that will give us a trend following long trade setup. Price may be near upper boundary at that time. However, that is okay because in this case, the stock is turning around from downtrend to uptrend. Under those circumstances, it is okay to take a trend following long trade even if price is near the upper boundary lines. You may keep an eye for a potential long in this stock in the coming days. Decelerating industries of the week. These are the 10 most decelerating industries. They tend to be worst performers in subsequent weeks. We are looking at their 5 days and 10 days scores. All these industries, 5 days scores are significantly lower than their 10 days scores. That is showing the deceleration. From QH sector heat map, you can see that real estate sector decelerated and that weakness shows in five industries coming among the most decelerating industries. These are real estate operating companies, healthcare rates, retail rates, diversified real estate activities and diversified rates. Because a large number of real estate industries decelerated, you may be careful about taking long trades in these industries. Instead, you might start to look for short opportunities. In retail rates, ROIC, this stock is overvalued. Again, the Q headwind signal of 25th July could catch the very top. Weekly is bearish. I think the backdrop candle color is still magenta. If the daily candle moves down, then you may look for short swing opportunity in the coming days. Let's look at the decelerating industries from QA. Locate retail rates, drill down to ROIC and see if there is a possible short opportunity in the coming days. In QA, the decelerating industries are displayed with magenta color over page 5 days column. We can see several of the most decelerating industries are in real estate sector. Retail rates was weak earlier, magenta color, then tried to go up, turn cyan and now turning 
bearish again magenta this may give us short opportunity let's drill down roic this stock is overvalued magenta color in valuation column recent quarter earnings growth is also negative quarterly earnings growth steadily declined from 11 percentage to zero to now negative 25 percent earnings quality is poor as well overvalued stock poor earnings quality decelerating earnings growth these are probably the best stocks to look for short opportunity let's look at the technical charts roic a while ago it displayed several bullish headwinds in the weekly chart after that price went up sharply however in recent weeks the weekly candles are tilting downward the highs of the candles are coming down it had earnings two weeks ago at that time the stock dropped one week ago it tried to go up and this week it reversed again in the daily chart it displayed a bearish headwind on this yellow candle and that could catch the very top of the recent move after that it is gradually coming down at earnings time it came down and recovered and now tilting down again weekly candle color is magenta daily already gave a magenta candle on wednesday you could take a short trade that time itself from there price didn't move much friday's candle closed with bearish shape and bearish color you could take a short trade on friday as well in fact wednesday thursday friday all of these three days one could take a trend following short trade you may look for a short opportunity in the coming week as well i mentioned that real estate sector decelerated let's have a look at the real estate sector from q edge real estate as a sector was weak earlier tried to strengthen and now weakening again from the pace column we can see it is one of the most decelerating sectors if we drill down we can see several of the real estate industries in fact all but two are decelerating heavily this may be a time to be careful of any long position you may hold in the real estate stocks i mentioned that materials is a sector that is now down for all the four weeks others may be looking for short opportunities now but we will start to look for potential long opportunities reversal long opportunities let's do that let's drill down into material sector from the materials industries we can see that most of them are very weak now they have been weak for quite a while however few of them exceptionals you can say paper products is strong it had been strong for quite a long time forest products related to paper products not as strong as paper products but the second strongest in this sector and aluminium is one that caught my attention it was weak it is still weak over five days the score is not signed yet however from the base column you can see that it has started accelerating the base columns are signed for five days two days as well as one day that means if we can find a good stock in aluminium we may be able to catch the very bottom fundamentally strong stock turning up from the low let's drill down into aluminium instantly from the q vital color mapping we can see that 
a a it is optimally valued and it is having very nice quarterly earnings growth either bright green or green it has good revenue growth as well all the revenue growth columns are either in bright green or dark green again has good earnings quality the best possible earnings score it went up by 5% in this week. I think AA is Alcoa. Let's look at AA to see if we could look for long opportunity on the charts. Alcoa, it dropped heavily, pierced below the watermark support level on this candle that was earnings week. And now for three successive weeks, closed with bullish shape candles this week closed above the watermark support level effectively creating a false downside breakout this week's candle shape and color both are very bullish this week was generally bearish for the market especially friday however alcoa is going up throughout the week in the daily chart we have this big drop associated with earnings and since then price is going up this friday price broke outside the triangle pattern with very heavy activity if you notice carefully friday's open was a gap down open and the open was precisely at the memory support line. We have discussed this technique earlier. If price comes to memory support on longer time interval, we can start looking for long opportunity on shorter time interval. And it was a gap down open. Therefore, we could start to look for gap long day trade opportunity that was bouncing up from daily memory line let's look at intraday chart to see if such a low risk entry opportunity was there on friday this is alcoa using five minute fine tune chart on friday it had a big gap down open price opened at the blue pivot line that was significantly below previous day's low gap down open Soon after that, the early range high and early range low lines form. On this yellow candle, it closed decisively above early range high. That was a gap long day trade setup. Stop would be just below early range low that was never touched. As price continued to go up, by the time price came to the magenta pivot line, more than risk distance was covered, one could book partial profit and continue to hold the remaining position. This trade ended up giving a large profit for a day trade. And we could use the technique of reversal using longer term memory support line effectively in the long trade. Many things were in favor of this trade. The industry was starting to accelerate. The stock was optimally valued. Stock was supported by daily memory support line. And in fact, you can see the memory support in the intraday chart also. And it also gave us a gap long day trade setup. When so many factors come together, we are happy to take a long trade with low risk. And this trade was low risk as well. Let me summarize. The market breadth study shows that both NASDAQ and NYSE are weak in terms of internals. Market ETFs show that most of the ETFs ended with bearish shape candles. Many of them are inside triangle patterns, only IWM is not. Though IWM was the strongest on Friday, 
that may be the one to give a Q short red setup first because others are inside triangle patterns. The weakness in the market breadth and the weakness in the market ETFs that is reflected in the sector level as well. Most of the sectors decline. For the week, several sectors are still up, but if we look on Friday's move, other than energy, all the sectors went down. So the week ended with a bearish note. At the industry level, we could still look for long and short opportunities. Alcoa gave very profitable long opportunity and several stocks gave profitable short opportunities as well. In this manner, whatever be the market condition, using the top-down approach or bottom-up approach, we can always look for profitable swing trades in both directions. That is all that I wanted to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably. Mm -hmm.